Hey everyone, so I thought I'd do a haul video today, but since a lot of you have been requesting that I do more ASMR videos, I thought I would combine the two of them. So this will be a part whispered, part soft spoken haul video. Please do let me know if you prefer the soft spoken or the whisper approach, and I will try and stick close with that one for any future ASMR videos. So as you can see in front of me I have an assortment of DVDs and books. So I'm just going to go through them one by one and say a little bit about them. And some of them were fantastic bargains. Most of them are second hand from charity shops. Um, and most of them, in fact all of them, apart from the Sabrina's, are for my Bonham Carter Burton or Byron boxes. So we'll just make our way down this pile and then we'll go down this pile. So I was in Glasgow last weekend in Caroline Ray and in Oxfam they had some books and they had a sale it was either 20% or 25% I can't remember but this collection was supposed to be 4 99 and of course I got it for money off that A collection of Byron's poems. Of course, some of the major, major longer poems are in there. But I think it's a, I think it's a nice little collection dated from the 1970s. And then we come to these beauties. If you've been watching my videos for some time, you will know that I have or already had all of the Sabrina DVDs. But for some reason, these three were twice the size when the boxes were released individually. Five, six, and seven were much larger cases. So I always thought I'd get this but I wasn't sure when. So in the run up to seeing Caroline Ray in Glasgow I watched all seven seasons over just over a month. Once I was finished I decided to trade all of the DVDs into CEX. I think that came to about £26 and this was 31 on Amazon, brand new. So I decided to use that £26 from CEX and put it towards the box set. So if you have the individual discs, as they were released one at a time, I'm about 2007. It might be worth trading them in if you can and getting the box set. The discs are the same as they were on the single releases. So the matte grey for the first four seasons and after that they become really shiny. I hope that wasn't too loud. Of course just swap these all back. So we have season two.
was the last one that was in the normal thickness. And then season five, which as some of you will know was about this thick. And then season six, which I really like. And last, and probably least to be honest, it's season seven. So I'm really happy with that. It came cellophane wrapped and everything brand new. And that's £31, but really it only cost me £5. Let's pop that there. And then next, we have High Potter and the Half Blood Prince. This was from a charity shop, as you can see it's not perfect condition. This was from a charity shop, this cost me 99 pence. Now 99 pence for a hardback book. Pretty fantastic. I'm currently reading Order of the Phoenix. I got that at the same time, also a hardback. Pages are in good enough condition now. So that's the first pile. I'm really happy with all of those. I can't wait to start watching Sabrina again because I was without the DVDs for about maybe two weeks almost. So the second pile, the first thing we have is also from that charity shop in Glasgow and this is Don Juan by Lord Byron. It's just a paperback copy and this is my first book that is purely Don Juan. The other copy, I've got about 10 copies of Don June, but they're all in other collections. This is just Don June, and we have some beautiful artwork in the front there. And I believe that this is a 1970s edition. I'm not going to read it out to you just now, but I will do more portrait readings at some point soon. So if anybody wants me to do that, I'll be very happy to read out maybe the first canto or something. It is a fantastic narrative, very exciting, and very, very comedic. This was two ninety nine, but again, I got money off of it. This was published in 1977, so I was very, very happy with that, as you can imagine. The next thing is a DVD. This is a Helena Bonham Carter DVD, and this is Shadow Play, which I had struggled to get hold of, so I'm glad that I've now I finally got it. I think this is region 1. So I'm not entirely sure if I can play it without changing the settings. I think I don't think my DVD player is multi region. But I'll take off the cellophane just now. You can look at the disc. I'm quite excited to see the disc. This won't be too loud for you.
there we go. I hope that, that wasn't too loud. There we go. Shadow play. Pretty sure they super glued that one onto the box. And I can't open it because there's a sticky thing. I need to get a knife and run that through it, possibly. Definitely sealed that one well. This was from Amazon and it was I think it was less than a fiver, which is not bad. There we go. Sorry if some of these extra noises are too loud for some people. I know that people have different triggers. Some people like that kind of noise. There we go. There we go. And then we have the desk. Was exciting. I'm looking forward to watching this one because I don't really know that much about it. I haven't even really heard of it. So that would be good. The next one I nearly squealed when I saw it. I already have a copy of A String of Pearls. I have a reprint of A String of Pearls. But this is the same story, except it's got the movie cover. So we have Sweetie Todd, and inside you have a string of pearls, which is actually quite a little bit different to the film itself. If you haven't read String of Pearls, there are a lot of characters missing, and the narrative's development is quite a lot different. We still have Sweeney Todd and Mrs. Lovett but their relationship is not the same as it is in the film. This was from a charity shop again. So I think it cost £2.50. It's from one of the more expensive ones. But it's in lovely, lovely condition and when I was in the charity shop, I actually eBayed it to see if it was on eBay, and I couldn't find a single copy anywhere. So I definitely think I've grabbed a good bargain there, and it's probably one of my favourite items in my collection now. I love Sweeney Todd, and the story, though different, is very fascinating. And if you do like Sweeney Todd, and you've never read the book on which it's based, I definitely recommend you do that. So next we have a DVD and this is Ghosts of Annesley Hall. Annesley Hall, for those who don't know, is just across the field from Newstead Abbey. Byron used to play there as a child with Marianne Chaworth and I love, love, love with a great passion Mary Chaworth and her relationship with Byron for many reasons which I won't go into and honestly Hall just now, whoever owns it does not look after it so it is just a ruin now was a fire in the building a couple of decades ago and since then it's kind of just rotted into an empty shell. So it does make good grounds for a ghost hunt. I find that term really derogatory as a spiritualist but we won't go into that just now. But because I love Mary Chalmers I wanted to get inside of it because I've never been to one of their ghost hunts if I may use their quote. So this, I bought this so I could actually see inside of it properly. I've been near the building of course, but not inside of it. And I'm not looking forward to watching it because it says on the back here, I'm not sure if you can read that, but I'll read it out to you. 
Byron's love for Annesley and Mary must surely be the reason why the ghosts still haunt the ruins of this once great, imposing hall. And I find that really offensive for various reasons, which I won't go into. Uh, but I'm, I will watch it, because I have to as a devout worshipper of Byron and a great lover of Mary Chaworth. I do need to watch it. It was about £8 on Amazon and it was actually a birthday present but I was given the money for it, if you know what I mean. So I definitely will watch it. Just when, I'm not entirely sure. If you have seen it, let me know what you think, please. Then we come on to another Tim Burton. And this is the Alice in Wonderland DVD. Now, I first saw this on somebody's channel a couple of years ago. And then I put the idea of buying it out of my mind, because I've already got the DVD. But I've always wanted it with the slipcover and the pictures. But I never got around to buying it. And then, a couple of months ago, another friend posted that they had it. And I caved and I bought it. I believe it cost me 99 pence and then postage on top of it on eBay. Which is not too bad. I, I already have the DVD, as I said, and I will trade that DVD into CEX or something so it's not a waste. It should really pay for itself. So it does come with the standard Alice in Wonderland DVD, which I'm sure most of you have seen. Got a disc in there. Um, I've already used the movie's reward code, but I'm not, of course, going to show you show you that. And then the slip cover is, of course, you can kind of see me there. Is of course a keyhole appropriate to Alice in Wonderland. And to slot in the front, you get some cards. Of course, I have on display her on the bottom card. Her. I love her, it doesn't need to be said. I quite like that combination of my wrist and her red queen face. But you also get cat. Stephen Fry of course as you can see. And you get Mia Wasikowska's Alice. Get some quotes down here as well. And we get the beautiful, gorgeous, perfect Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter. I love his face. <laughs> and Anne Hathaway as the White Queen and then we get my fat boys Matt Lucas as of course Tweedledum and Tweedledee so we just pop them on the back of the DVD like that and then slot them it's just such a beautiful, beautiful slip cover. I always knew I wanted it, but I never saw it. So when I saw it on eBay for, as I said, I think it was 99 pence bidding, um, I just grabbed it up and I was the only person who bid on it. So I can't complain. Then we have the latest book I bought. This was not, whatever that says, um, this was about £3 on ebay so as you can see nothing's really cost me anything it's either been a birthday present or it's been a couple of pound um, this is the un un the uninhibited byron an account of his sexual confusion by bernard grabanier possibly and i've either heard nothing about this or bad things about this most people i've asked haven't heard of it the few reviews are a bit peculiar, but I'm still looking forward to reading it. So 
basically it looks at Byron's sex life, if you will. Um, and within his poetry, of course, it incorporates his poetry. We have some to Teresa there, which is of course about Adelston. This is one of my favourite pictures. This is Byron when he's about 18. It says there, Lord Byron, upon leaving Harrow. I just think that's lovely. It's such a striking, beautiful image, though possibly scary if, <laughs> if uh, you're not familiar with it. But I like it a lot. I do think it's a bit odd that there's, they're all females when, of course, it looks into kind of, of homosexuality in it as well, as far as I can tell, anyway. They have no childbirth. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a couple of pounds, and I was more intrigued than anything else. This item was also a birthday present. I was given a gift card for Waterstones for my birthday and I went onto their website because you can spend gift cards on their website and I decided to look at what Tim Burton books they have because I was keen to get a new one and the one I came across that really took my fancy was Tim Burton, A Child's Garden of Nightmares. This is the River High Stop end updated version and I think visually it's a really beautiful book. Makes quite a nice kind of flappy sound and it goes through all of his films from the early days right through the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Corpse Bride. 2005. Some beautiful, beautiful images. Some of them are reviews. Some of them are articles. Some of them are essays and more analytical than just review. It's not as good as the Burton on Burton which is actually written by Tim Burton, but nothing would be as good as that. I particularly like that image. It's definitely a, a really good book with some gorgeous images and will really open up, really open up the films. Definitely worth getting hold of if you're a fan of Tim Burton. It's there's a lot in there. It doesn't look too thick, but it covers a lot of ground in quite a short space of time. And I hope that they will do a revised version or a similar version in maybe ten years' time, because the Burton on Burton was revised at the same time. This was. I believe the pocket guide was updated at the same time. I'm not sure because I have the I have the updated version, but I can't remember. Um, so most of the Tim Burton books were revised in the same year. So I'm hoping that they'll do this one again. And the last book, and probably the biggest bargain of them all, is this beautiful book. So it's I hope you can see that it is quite large. The Works of Lord Byron, the Excelsior edition. And I found this in an antiquarian and second hand bookshop in Glasgow. And this one was a bit of a mess. They had a lot of stock, but really small shops, so they were just books, you know, wall to wall, ceiling to floor. So I couldn't find anything, so I had to ask if they had any Byrons and the person in charge had saw this recently and they went and fetched it for me and it cost, can you see that, I don't think you can, it's too dark, it cost the grand total of one pound.
pound. I nearly fell over when he told me that this book, which I must add was published in 1881, so it's well on its way to being 150 years old. We have the frontispiece protection there. It's well on its way to being very old. Published by William P. Nimmo and Co. in Edinburgh. I have, I think, three by William P. Nimmo now. I just think it's such a beautiful, beautiful collection. So, to finish off the haul, I thought I would whisper read one of Byron's poems. Just for a treat for those of you who have made it this far. So, I think I'll read. On leaving Newstead Abbey from Hours of Idleness. I'm currently writing a piece about this poem just now. So it's not too long. Through the battlements, Newstead, the hollow winds whistle. Thou, the hall of my fathers, art gone to decay. In thy once smiling garden, the hemlock and thistle have choked up the rose which late bloomed in the way. Of the mail covered barons who proudly to battle led their vassals from Europe to Palestine's plain. The escutcheon and shield, which with every blast rattle, are the only sad vestiges now that remain. No more doth Robert with heart stringing numbers raise a flame in the breast for the low war laurelled Ascalon's towers, John of Horiston slumbers, unnerved is the hand of his minstrel by death. Paul and Hubert too sleep in the valley of Cressy, for the safety of Edward and England they fell. My fathers, the fear of your country redress ye, how you fought, how you died, still her annals can tell. On Marston with Rupert, Traitors contending, our brothers enriched with their blood at the bleak field. For the rights of the monarch, their country defending, till the death their attachment to royalty sealed. Shades of heroes farewell, their descendant departing. From the seat of his ancestors, it's you, the Jew. Abroad or at home, your remembrance and parting. New courage you will think of, glory and you. Though a tear dim his eye at this sad separation, tis nature, not fear, that incites his regret. Far distance he goes with the same emulation. The fame of his fathers he ne'er can forget. That fame and that memory still with he cherish. He vows that he ne'er will disgrace your renown. Like you will he leave, or like you will he perish. When decayed may he mingle his dust with your own. And that was written in 1803. So that's the end of the haul. I hope you enjoyed this. And as I said, please let me know if you prefer the soft-spoken like just now, or the whisper like I read the poem in. I know a lot of people like inaudible. they're not really that practical for a whole video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!